This is Splash, a free arts workshop based in Chattanooga, Tennessee. These videos are a series of remote art classes for youth and can be found on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram. Number 60. The Landscape in Coloured Pencils This is Splash Art Class, free art class for kids. And I'm Charlie Newton, your teaching artist, or your artist who's going to teach today. Well, today we're going to uh, go back to what we had started last time. Last time we did a drawing, a landscape drawing. And we did it in regular pencil. And the object was to start the drawing that we're going to do three uh, drawings. And the first one you can see here that we did with pencil. And it was a, a study. You could call this a study, or you could call it a finished drawing. So what I wanted you to see was the different value changes, the gradations, and the graduation of uh, shadows and shades. Now we're going to do this same drawing. We're going to do it again, but this time with color pencils. You find out that when you draw a picture, or an object from life, uh, when you draw a subject more than once, uh, each drawing will change slightly, but each drawing also gets easier. So instead of using pencils, regular uh, uh, graphite, we're going to use color pencils this time. And I suggest that you draw, that you find a, a blue color pencil. Let's draw it in blue today. And I'm going to use a different type of paper this time. We have been using grainy paper. And this paper is a lot smoother. And just let's see what it looks like on this paper. So the texture is very smooth and it's about the same on both sides. I think that this size is, is a little bit more smooth and maybe have a little bit more uh, sheen to it. So I'm going to do it on the side that don't have as much sheen. It's hard to tell, but, but you know, you can sort of tell by touching. Can we see the whole, the entire sheet of paper? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna take this down so that it don't move, hopefully. So this time we're going to draw in Choose a light blue. You could choose a, a blue like this one, or even a lighter blue. I think I'll go with this blue here um, for the initial sketch. Or you could go lighter. And so the first thing that we did last time was we drew a horizon line. So lightly, maybe one third of the way up, a little less than a third of the way up, draw lightly a line straight across as a horizon line, just so that we know where the bottom of the picture is going to, to be. Here? Okay. Can they see this line? These lines? Okay. It's very faint, but I just drew a straight line across. Now above that line, we're going to draw a hill that's sort of like, uh, now the top, remember, is, is the sky. Everything below this line is the earth. So there's a hill in the background that goes something like this slopes down into this horizon line. Go ahead and draw that hill. You, as you see, I'm sketching and I'm, hold, and I'm holding my pencil the way you would hold it. Hold it to sketch. And beh behind that hill, you're going to draw another hill very lightly. We're not going to see this part of the hill, but you have to, have to imagine 
So there's another hill, a slope. So the landscape is sloping. And um, the last thing we're going to do is I'm going to redraw this horizon line. And this horizon line, I'm going to redraw it at an, an at an angle. So right now, I drew the horizon line straight across like this. But now I'm going to slope it at an angle like that. So you get the feeling of rolling hills. And I'm not going to use the ruler because the ruler makes it too mechanical. And nature isn't me mechanical. When man kind, when we reshape nature, then that's when we get the straight lines and the sharp angles. So you have a sloping horizon line on your picture plane. Then you have a hill in the background. The hill don't have to be as large as the one I drew. Remember, you know, your picture don't have to look exactly like mine. And now we're going to draw a grove of trees. So we're going to use circles to sort of define what that grove of trees look like. So if you divide your paper in half to the right hand side of the paper, you're going to have your first circle. Make it pretty large, not small. And so we're just drawing the basic shapes now. The trees are the most complex shapes that we have in this landscape picture. And behind that, that first circle, let's make a larger circle and let the first circle, the right side, overlap this circle. It's just a basic shape of trees. And then behind this circle, we're going to draw maybe a small, slightly smaller circle. And then just draw a line outside to show that it goes on and on in that finitum. We'll come back to this. Remember, we're going to draw over these. And we're going to, this whole thing is going to be in a color pencil. On the left hand side of your paper, draw a triangle. So these trees over here on the left hand side is going to be in the shape of a triangle. So we'll draw half a triangle because we can't see the other half because it falls out the paper. When we draw, don't try to, to make things fit into the paper, let your drawing run off the page. So that's one triangle. Now let's draw a second triangle because that's the basic shape of these trees on this side. Let's draw a third triangle that overlaps this second triangle. It looks, it looks like a TP. It looks like we're drawing TPs. But we just need those basic shapes there. The reason why we're drawing with blue is because this blue color will disappear easier. We're going to try not to erase, try to erase color pencils. It's difficult to do that. Now, let's go back to the right side of the paper with this grove of trees. We're going to do a circle here on the left hand side. We're trying to get the lumps and bumps in these trees. We're going to do a circle here at, at, at the bottom of the left hand side. Then we're going to do another circle that overlap this circle, the larger circle. 
Then we're going to do another circle in the middle. We're just drawing circles. We're going to do a circle here or an oval shape. Another circle here. So this is like the shape of the leaves as they bunch together for the trees behind let's do a circle here right up against that circle now we do a circle to overlap here in the future you won't draw these circles I'm just doing the circles now so that you can see these shapes easier and I'll do a large circle here and you can draw as many circles as you want or as few circles as you want to and circle here there may be a tree in the foreground here we'll draw a circle there or an oval shape now for the third one the third large circle let's do a circle here on top a circle here underneath that circle a circle there so these are the basic shapes So we, what we're trying to do is get an outline. So I'm going to darken this in a little bit. And we, as I draw, I demonstrated the last time I drew circles and then I put a lot of little squiggly marks. So to demonstrate again what I'm doing. So first we have a circle for the tree. So we put a bunch of circles on here. And the reason why we did that is we tried to break up this large circle into a shape. So now what I'm doing is I'm just imagining in my mind leaves. And I'm going around these circles, putting a lot of little lumps and bumps and squiggly marks, thinking like this is you know, these are leaves or a bush or whatever. And then we're going to shade. Because this is what we're really going for, the outline. We could have not use the circles and we could have just tried to draw the shape of the trees but and in the future that we'll just go straight to the shape but for now we can we will draw the basic shapes just to help out help you see these shapes remember to make these shapes overlap one another. It's kind of like drawing clouds. A tree is like a cloud that's been planted on the ground. And remember to keep your hand off the paper. So now I need to draw a little detail and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the tree trunk and the limbs and I'm using the point of my uh, pencil to do that and I'm going to draw with double lines see the trunk and the limbs and you can just kind of indicate limbs or branches there may be something sticking up here that you can see in the background I always use double lines when I say double lines what I mean is if I draw the tree trunk I'm using two lines I'm not doing a stick figure even if the lines are close together it, it's okay so that's this is what I mean by double lines the light is going to come from this side so the shading is going to be on that side of the tree I'll show you later Also, I should mention when you're drawing, the reason why we're looking for these small shapes, I'm going to do a trunk here, is because we're trying to simplify everything. I'm going to draw a trunk, a tree trunk that's coming up like this. this these trees are really tall. So these lines just indicate uh, trunks and limbs. We can't really see branches because we're not close enough. This last one has several uh, trunks. I'm going to use three. One, two, three. Then draw some 
branch some limbs coming off these trunks and then in the background you can see some limbs of a tree way back here somewhere and put as many of these little trunks and limbs as you want to show a grove of trees I can just stick something here or or here these double lines two lines and you think that there's a trunk and or a, dip, or, or a tree somewhere back there we're going to do something similar on this side for this uh, tree back here we're going to do a uh, a tree trunk that goes up and you can't see much in these trees and maybe something like that and now I'm going to sharpen my pencil and I'm going to draw a dead tree and this dead tree curves like this remember we're doing the same picture that we did before slight differences and that's because we're not machines so there will be some slight differences and hopefully the differences will enhance the idea so do the tree trunk and the branches the branches come out like this sometimes you can make one line because the, the uh, double lines are so close together it looks like one line and I'm also going to do another tree which is different than the first one that I did in pencil so now what we're going to do we're going to draw some squiggly lines on these triangle triangle shapes I'm letting these lines really flow out like there are branches with leaves on them flowing out from the tree. I'm going to draw some lines behind this tree trunk to give it some depth. I'm thinking like the shape of Christmas trees, triangular shapes then you have the dead tree here so on this hill back here we're going to put a couple of, of little oval like shapes with wiggly lines there may be some trees going you know down that hill there over that hill and I'm going to enhance this line to show that there's some land way in the distance I'm going to now we're going to redraw this horizon line and the top of it we're going to make this a double line the top of it is going to be like bushes just some little shapes like you're drawing clouds haphazard shapes and I'm going to let these bushes flow into this grove of trees here and really accentuate the bottom of that line there because underneath here it's going to be very dark so in the foreground there is a uh, triangular shape a triangle like shape triangular <laughs> but it's bent, it's very soft, it's nature, so it's not perfect. We're gonna draw that shape, and there's gonna be like a little pond or something in the foreground. And then I'm gonna look up here to these strong lines, and I'm gonna duplicate them. Like since this line's going in it to the left, I'm gonna let it go to the left, here is sort of like a mirror image. This one is flowing to the right. I'm going to let it flow to the right here. This one is almost straight up and down. I'm going to let it do that. That one. Show that one. So I'm thinking of it like I'm looking into a mirror. 
So if this bends that way, it has to bend this way, to the right, and so on. Okay, and then just put some little indication that there may be some leaves or something. And the foreground here, let's go ahead and draw the the flowers. So we had some little wild flowers growing up here. Think of the shapes of uh, leaves on the flowers. Also in this uh, left hand corner, we had some little flowers. Think of flower like shapes. Just indicate it. So we're going to enhance this line here. So with this paper, there aren't, you don't, I don't see many grains, but because of the, the text, the surface of this paper, my uh, line, my color is going to be a little bit more muted. So let's start drawing some clouds. Still using the blue pencil. Draw your clouds any way you want to. So I'm going to draw a huge cloud here that comes over and does something like that. And there's some, another cloud that's above it that does something like this. There's a little opening here on a cloud here. Comes around like that. Now I'm drawing sort of heavy so that you can see, but you should draw, you know, light. Don't draw too heavy on your paper. Then it's a cloud that goes across the page like this. And so on. Draw as few or as many clouds as you want. I want to draw some cumulus clouds. So you have those circular like shapes at the top and the bottom is almost straight. And I could do some little clouds like that if I wanted to in the background. The smaller I make the clouds, they appear to be in the background, but we know in real life that's not the case. I'm going to get a lighter blue pencil. You may not have a lighter blue. If not, you can use the blue that you have. And we're going to start shading in some of this, some of these colors. And we may overlap. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Uh, sometimes you, you, you know, it's better to just make those type of decisions when you come to them. So I want the bottom part to be very light. The, the, the part of the sky that sort of meets the earth. I'm going to let paper show through. So I'm using a very light touch. I suggest using a light touch with color pencil and and just build your colors. That way, since it's, they are so unforgiving, that way you can move to something slow. I'm doing the sky first. I usually do the sky first. You don't have to do the sky first. It's just something that I do. It makes it easier for me to overlap the sky with shapes. And since the clouds are in the sky, be careful to not color out your clouds. So sometimes you can forget what your lines mean. So be careful about that. I plan to have different shades of blue. Now, as I go from bottom to top, the blues that I use will d get darker.
So I like to uh, overlap and I like to keep it simple. Let's keep it simple. I may use two or three shades of blue, probably two. I'm not sure. But right now I'm, I'm just trying to determine where the clouds are and where they are not. Where's the sky? Okay, so we can see where the sky is now. So now I can go over the sky and make things darker. I think I'm going to use this other blue and see what it looks like. I'm also going to draw some um, shades with this blue shade the clouds with this blue and uh, maybe this is before a, a rain maybe it's getting ready to rain so I'm going to use some purple in this picture as well and some dark blue blue so you don't have to use the same blue that I use um, and you don't even have to use blue can use any color you, you could be drawn with pink now always remember now we're just showing you the basics now once you have this sketch down color this any kind of way that you want to any way you want to but we're just doing the basics a lot of times I'm not sure what I want to do so I just keep working until I'm sure And that's half the fun, experimenting. Always think of these classes as practice. So I'm going back with this blue. Remember I had, let's go with this lighter blue again. This is a weird looking blue. Now, since my paper is smooth, I have a lot of options. And I'm not sure. So, I let the picture tell me what it wants to be. I'm going to put some blue down here in the pond area. And I'm going to even put some blue beh behind the trees a little bit. Be because if you pick up a little bit of blue in these trees your mind might say hey these trees are up in, in the air and there's sky behind the trees but I'm not putting blue down into I can but I'm not putting blue I'm not letting the blue fall down into the landscape but I can do that if I want to it's so open-ended art, you know. No one's art looks the same, and that's how it should be. Notice how I'm not pressing down, and look at how I'm holding my pencil. Now, I may decide to press down later, but not yet. Now, I'm going to take this blue, and I'm going to go over everything and try to fill in the white areas with this blue. So we have two shades of blue in the sky. When you look in, in the sky, it's not flat. So by getting two values, maybe this picture won't look so flat. I don't want this to look like I did it with a marker. And by uh, coloring lightly, I'm sort of leaving texture in, hinting at texture a little bit. It gives it a little bit of air. Now I may go back and decide to make this thing very dark.
but right now you can see the pencil strokes and that's okay for now and I am I haven't been keeping up with the time so how many minutes do we have left You can cross hatch. I'm cross hatching now. So your picture should look something like this. I would be pleased if your picture looked a little bit like this. I sort of like seeing the pencil strokes. So, I want you guys to catch up. Try not to press down too hard when you're drawing the sky. You can always go back and overlap. So we make colors uh, dark by overlapping. So, I know when to stop. When to stop now, I answer. Yeah, I looked and saw. Now I'm going back with this darker blue. I'm going to make the sky darker. Look how I'm holding my pencil. I'm really being very careful. I'm trying to be very careful about uh, at this stage. So I can leave myself open for decision making. I'm trying not to use the point of this pencil. I don't want to use the point. I really shouldn't have sharpened the pencil. I'm using the flat side of the pencil. So I want different variations of blues. So I'm using three blues. Three blues! <laughs> using this light blue and since it's the lettering is gold I can't tell you I can't see the name of the color it's kind of like a turquoise anyway and I'm using this dark blue called Blue Copenhagen and I, I thought I had a shorter pencil that I was using. Uh, using the uh, pencil color pencils the same in the same fashion that I would use a regular graphite pencil a regular 2b or 4b and by I, I keep reiterating go slow let's not be in a hurry all the time this is not McDonald's or Captain D's. <laughs> this is more like Red Lobster. <laughs> you have to wait for the meal. Now, if I press down hard, and I don't think I'm going to do that with this, with this drawing, I can make these color pencils look more like watercolors. But I, I think I just want let's let's keep the color pencil. Let's 
And I'm going to use this dark blue, and I will be going back with a, a purple and, and blue. Uh, but I'm very concerned about the bottom of the clouds. I want to give some volume to it. So, for instance, I may do something like this on this huge cloud here. and let it, some dark clouds float down into the sky like that. Remember, I'm going to go back with some purple too over some of this dark blue in the clouds. I'm not going to indicate it with this dark blue. I know where my clouds are. So uh, you have to make sure that you don't confuse your clouds with the sky. So remember where your clouds are. Always use your drawing. Don't lose the drawing. Build on top of the drawing. Even if we, if we can't physically, obviously see the drawing, we should know it's there by the way you build on it. So I'm still using the side of the pencil because I, won't, I don't want sharp edges here clouds in the background. I'm aware that my tree line is here. I'm aware of that. I'm aware that this is landscape in, you know, land, a, a land mass in the uh, background. So sometimes, see, uh, I'm not stopping and looking, but this is a time, a good time to stop and just look and plan. putting some blue down here so when I put when I bring this blue down here to this shape it makes it look like water it looks like a reflection I'm gonna get my light blue again and there's something happening that I want to see if I can enhance this color so now I'm using uh, the point of this pencil but I'm still not bearing down a lot on it but I want you to see this color so I've decided to really enhance this color this light blue color uh, I mean I wish I could read what this says but it's too much of a sheen Oh, it's kind of like a neonish like turquoise. It's beautiful blue. And I still want to use the, the white of the paper. I want the white of the paper to show through because it makes the blue look lighter. Now I'm gonna make this a little darker by using the point the side of the point. Not straight up and down like this, but still on the side. Not how? Excuse me? Not what? What did I say? Not straight up and down. Not straight up and down like this, oh. but the side of the point. Not the tip of the point, but the side of the point. Sort of like a wedge. And what I'm going to do, and your picture tells you what to do. Remember, I'm always saying that. I'm going over this dark blue to fill in some of the lighter areas with this color. Turquoise, neon, blue. I could have, I could go over with red. Now, my techniques I'm going to, in the future, we have an announcement coming up 
pretty soon about some classes that's going to be even more accessible than our Facebook class. And uh, I'm going to be, I'm transitioning into showing you, these are all my techniques, but I'm going to go more into my, my way of doing things just to, just for the fun of it. So now let's find a purple. I'm not rushing. If we finish today, I think we will finish today. Let's find a lavender. Let's, look, I may use this one. I'm not going to sharpen this pencil. And I may use that one if I can't find a deeper purple. And uh, your pencil may say violet. So it's violet or purple. I am going to sharpen this one. Because this is pretty dark. So I have three purples here. Three different shades. I may start with this medium shade first. To see how what it looks like. So once we start putting purple into the clouds, now the clouds are getting darker, and and we can think more about rain. I may put a little yellow highlights in that. In the end, as you're making your decisions about your colors, whatever looks good to you is correct. So we're using the, the white of the paper as the white of the clouds and we're putting some purple shading in. And some, it's okay if the purple goes into the uh, blue of the sky because the clouds are a part of the sky as well. I'm thinking about the light st still coming from the right hand side, upper right hand side. when you draw like this there's no doubt that these are color pencils
And all I'm thinking of clouds and sky. So what I'm going to do now, let's go ahead and go with a darker purple and see what happens. I have a sharp, uh, I've sharpened this a lot because I want this to, I'm using the point, the side of the point to make this darker. Now the slower you go, I'm making up clouds as I go just now, just here. So hey, little details, when you get into your drawing, you know, long after we're off the air, continue to work on your picture even if you had to put it down and go back to it the next day. And what will happen is the picture will say, hey, you need a little bit of this, you need a little bit of that. And just put it in there. So as I'm going back with this darker color, the picture is really beginning to really speak to me more now visually it's a there's a visual language and there's something unique to the way that you see things there's something unique to the way you make lines the way you draw you know we study techniques so that we can gain more facility so that we can gain more uh, techniques to add to our quiver and that's why we study other artists but never lose yourself so I'm going to go back with this dark blue in this area here I'm using the side of the point. Just in small areas. I want this very dark blue. Maybe up here in the corner. Maybe these are dark clouds rolling in. And this is about it for the sky. I can always go back to the sky later. For the landscape, I'm gonna focus on the landscape now, so let's get yellow. I'm going with the brightest color I can find. I'm gonna draw behind these trees here. This is a highlight the sun is hitting these areas. I'm gonna put some yellow up in the trees here on the right top right hand side. And there's a tree in front here so I'll put some yellow here but I want you to see that the sun is hitting the top of these trees. And we're using yellow because it's a, a hot color and it's a light color. I can put some yellow down in here too. Over here, I'm going to use a light green if I can find one, but I will place that on top of the yellow. I just want, this is where the sunlight is hitting. Everywhere I'm putting the yellow, the sunlight hitting those areas. Now I'm going to get a, a lighter yellow. And I believe we're going to finish today, but it's going to be very close. This yellow, I can't tell the difference, so I'll put that away. Now let's get a green. We're going to need a dark green. 
And we're going to need a light gray one. Maybe we'll use this one. Let's draw with the, the light green first. Let's start over here on this grove of trees. You can color most of this in light green, it, except for the, the part that's close to the horizon line. Don't, do not color that in. But the body of the trees, wherever the light is hitting, the sun is hitting the top of the trees, and there's less light hitting the bottom, except for these trees that are in front, like this little tree here. Sun so is hitting the right side, so the left side of these objects will be in shadow. Let's put a little bit of green down here. Let's go over to the these triangular shaped trees. Remember top right and right side of the tree. And because the trees aren't flat, there's a three dimensional quality that we're not getting into yet. Let's not forget these trees in the background here, the little grove of trees in the background. Matter of fact, I'm going to to draw the top of uh, this little hill as well. Okay, this, this, I want to go to a brown before I go to a dark green. Let's go to a, a light brown, a ochre. Let's draw this hill in the background. There's a lot of dirt, or the grasses burn out. I forgot to put some green in, into this area here. But anyway, I'm looking behind the trees to this hill. Maybe there's some burnt out grass. You can see some of the dirt, maybe. Do that in the background. Get these pencils out of the way. This is ochre. It's like a dark yellow. Let's put some of this, some strokes, some streaks. This may indicate dirt in the foreground here. Remember, the bottom of your page is always going to be uh, closer, it's going to seem to be closer to you. I'm still leaving some white paper for green. Now, the dark green, let's do the dark green. in the body of the trees. I started in the middle. Maybe I should have started on this side. We're gonna go back with some black. But uh, let's do this. I'm gonna stop with the green. I want you to get your ochre or brown. Your ochre or a light brown. Something that you can see. Ochre or light brown. I want you to just color the trunks of your tree so that you don't draw over it and lose it. The trunks and the limbs. Let's do that real quick. I'm using the point and I'm digging in. I'm, not, I'm putting pressure on the paper. I don't want to indent the paper, but I do want to put pressure. 
this shouldn't take long to do. I'm also going over here to my dead tree doing the same thing. Using the point of my pencil. Sometimes the point is not on the point. Sometimes the point is on the side. But we don't really uh, sharpen the pencil that much as much as I'm doing. We don't really sharpen our pencils that much. We just turn the pencil. But that's for another lesson. That's more, I guess, more advanced lesson. And if I put some little marks like this, it sort of looks like there's a bunch of trees in the background somewhere. So the more little marks you put, the more realistic it's going to look. So Now I can go back with my dark green. I'm just going to color the entire, whatever's left with dark green. Leave some little highlights, leave the top of the trees for highlights. Look at my picture to help you. If we was out here, we would just try to draw what we see. So now you sort of have to just draw what you see me drawing. That's a little shape there. We're going to go back with black as well. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to actually stop this right here and finish this next time. Let's stop this right here. And I'll remember to start with this green here. I'll leave it here. And we'll finish it next time because there's some more things we want to do down here. Uh, you can continue to work on yours, uh, but as far as these highlights, you might want to wait until our next class. Well, this has been fun and, and the time just flew as it seems to do once I start drawing. And uh, remember, take all the time you need for your drawing. And if you think you messed up, so what? You have another sheet of paper, you can start again. I really like the idea of trying to fix your mess up because sometimes seeing the history of your drawing makes the drawing more interesting. So that's why sketches are so important. We can see the history. So what we did was we took a drawing and first did it in pencil. And now we're transferring it to color pencil. And we're going to continue that next week. And then we're going to do one in watercolor and see what we come up with. And after that, we may do a mixed medium. I don't know. We should be very comfortable with this landscape after drawing it more than once. And that's why artists have drawing pads. I know I'm talking a lot, but that's why we have these drawing pads so that we can practice. And the more you draw, the better you get. This has been Charlie Newton. This has been Splash. I've enjoyed it. I hope you have the rest, a good rest of your day. And remember, Art is for everyone. Bye-bye.